Welcome to Monetize the Mic. I'm Jessica Rhodes. And I'm Margie Feltune. And we are the co-owners of the award-winning multi-seven-figure podcast booking agency, Interview Connections. This is the show to teach you how to transform your business and life with the power of visibility and strategy. Let's get started. On this episode, I want to share a really, really great breakthrough I had. (laughs) Spoiler alert, we're sharing all of our breakthroughs on this podcast now, but I want to share a really important breakthrough about like workaholism and people pleasing and the connection because I had this pivotal moment recently when I was you know, talking with my husband, Jamie, he was like, Hey, you know, we do our two week vacation every summer with our like extended family. And then he was like, I really think this summer we should also do a week vacation, like just the four of us. And I was like, yeah. And when he suggested that I was starting to get a little nervous about taking another week off. And, um, normally one would be excited for a vacation, but it was like kind of stressing me out, like scheduling it in. And, you know, we found this week where it's fine. Like there's no launching happening. And it was like, we were looking at this Wednesday to a Wednesday. And I saw that on the calendar was like a group mastermind call and a content day, like where we record all of our podcasts. And I was like, okay, Jamie, maybe like, let's leave like Wednesday afternoon. Cause like I have some stuff in the morning and he was like, it's, we're talking about August. Like you can't move it. And I, I was like getting really nervous and like uncomfortable. And I was like, um, no, I can get it. And he like, he gave me the look, right. He was like, seriously, like you can't move this. Like, and I real like, it was just in that moment where I was like, oh my God, like, I don't, I'm not like addicted to work. I'm not a workaholic. I am deeply afraid of inconveniencing other people because I knew that if I said, I'm going to be off that day. I would have to ask Margie, can we record our podcast on a different day? And I would have to say to Margie, can you lead the call that day? And I was so afraid to make that request. And I was like, I have always identified as a hard worker. I love work. I'm a career woman. (laughs) Like that has been my identity. And through all of this work that's happening right now, this personal work, I realized it is like people pleasing manifesting as workaholism and an addiction to work. It's not an addiction to work. I actually quite enjoy taking time off, but I was so afraid of inconveniencing somebody that I just was like, I love working. (laughs) Yeah. And like the stuff that Jess is talking about is like very easy to reschedule too. (laughs) Like it just exactly like we reschedule like our content block. When we record the podcast, we reschedule it like all the time. In fact, the August one is a reschedule of the original one because I booked a weekend with my bestie and I was like, I'll just move this. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Marky and I have different trauma tendencies. (laughs) Yeah. But I, I think this is really good because this is something, um, when we did the leadership in the nervous system panel, which we, um, also put out as a podcast episode. So hopefully you listen to it, um, and talked about psychological safety. We talked a little bit about, um, tra- trauma informed leadership, which I think is really, really interesting. And I'm excited to go down more of a rabbit hole on that. Um, but one of the things we talked about, because having worked with Elizabeth, Elizabeth Kristoff, who I guess we talk about in every episode now, she's basically our co-host now. (laughs) Yeah. We're only slightly obsessed with her and the work that she's doing, but, um, she was talking about herself, how, um, you know, nervous system dysregulation and trauma and stuff manifested as perfectionism and high achieving and how true that is for a lot of business owners, a lot of high performers, um, there's like this aspect of like, yes, you love what you do, but then there's this aspect of the way that you're doing it that can be dysfunctional. And it was really interesting because we were talking about leadership in the nervous system and talking about our teams. And there's this sort of myth in mastermind groups and just groups of entrepreneurs talking. It's like that if you have this employee who is so all in, they're working longer hours than everybody. They're trying harder. Their work is perfect. Like they're just like this quintessential a player. 
everybody's like, oh my God, you're so lucky. Like, where did you get them? How can we clone them? And there's nothing wrong with having someone who's a super high performer. I'm a high performer, Jess is a high performer. Like it's good, but there's also with trauma-informed leadership, there is this aspect of, is that person working that way because of dysregulation. And a lot of the times I think the answer is yes, we can still perform at a high level. We can still work hard and go hard on the things that we love that we're in flow and alignment on that feel really easy, but that generate results in revenue. But I do think it's really powerful to look at this idea of, especially you know, within capitalism, it's being a hard worker, being a doer, being a grinder, being the hardest worker in the room. Like all, there's so many sayings, there's so many quotes, there's so many motivational posters, like it's so glorified. And I think it's really important to bring in this aspect of the dialogue that it's kind of dysfunctional. And while the label of being a workaholic or a super hard worker feels really validating to the ego, that ego boost might be covering up some less, you know, maybe attractive or less gratifying to the ego traits that have more to do with proving self-worth, getting affirmation, not letting people down, people pleasing, all that stuff. Yeah. And when you understand and have these breakthroughs of understanding your tendencies and what they're coming from, a lot of your actions can be similar, but it is totally perceived in a new way. And you feel so much more different. Um, you know, so for me, like I, I do, I love this business and I love what I do. And before I realized that I had these people pleasing tendencies, like, I, I mean, I've heard for forever people are like, I'm a people pleaser. And I'm like, that's not me. That's not me. And I'm like, Oh, okay. Maybe it is. So I I've had, since I've had this realization around like how I do, I have had these people pleasing tendencies. Now I'm realizing, Oh my gosh, like I can see how many times I was working more hours, working harder, doing more things because I wanted to please people. And I didn't want to inconvenience anyone. And I wanted to like show my worth. And now that I realize the difference, like, you know, I'm working on our social media at seven in the morning. Cause I want to, cause it's fun. Not because I'm trying to please somebody. And then I may stop working at four 30 or four o'clock because I know I've provided the value that I can provide that day. And I don't feel bad or guilty about it. And it's just it's so interesting to have this realization and this breakthrough because I'm now seeing it in other people, which is like, I'm like, okay, now I gotta, um, I can't not coach this person through this or, you know, and I think it's, I, I love what you're saying, Margie, about the dysfunctional, um, you know, traits, because it's, it makes me sad, right. When people are like, they want to check their email on vacation because they don't want to inconvenience you. And I think that's something I mean, you talk about this all the time, like really healing the workplace, healing the team. So people can feel free to, to take that time off without feeling stressed about it. Yeah. And the healing of a team starts with the leaders, right? Like it's, you, it's not enough to just work on an individual level. You also have to work with the organization and as a group, but it starts with the leader and you can send a message with your words that it's okay to unplug and take a vacation. If you're not actually modeling that energetically and with your actions, they, people are smart. Social mammals pick up on cues and it's not just what you say. And if you say something's okay, but every other piece of you is indicating it's not okay, your team will get the message. They're like, all right, wink, wink, got it. It's okay to do this. Like, I know it's not, and they won't do it. So this healing that we do as leaders has such an impact to create this next level team, to create group healing. And when you think about how people spend, and we, I'll probably do a whole episode on this, but when you think about how people spend the majority of their time at work, the space that you create within your organization 
has such a huge impact on people's lives, which then has this ripple effect on all the people that they live with and come in contact with. So I think leaders have this incredible opportunity to create this shift in consciousness and to heal generational trauma and all of this stuff by creating these safe spaces with their teams. But it really does start with you as the leader. Yeah. So if you do feel like you're a workaholic and you're addicted to your work, just know that there may be some trauma to process. There may be some tendencies playing out that are in your blind spot. And as somebody who has felt like a workaholic, there is this, there is a possibility for you to enjoy taking time off and to do it in a way that feels really good and free and not like it's constricting, you know? So we hope that this was helpful and maybe shed a light on something that you weren't looking at before. 